Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez here. In this box I have my brand new Precision Color Signature Edition inks for the Pro 100. I have successfully filled the first seven and I left the yellow one for you guys to see how I do this. Now, as you can see, maybe, I have a little bit of ink on my hands. If you do not have ink on your hands, yeah, you're not refilling enough. Okay, that's a badge of honor for us refillers. Yes, I could use gloves, but it really doesn't matter. I will just put a little bleach water on them later and clean it all up nicely. All right, let's look at one of these cartridges here. See what we have achieved. So here is the magenta cartridge. And you can see maybe, if I could backlit this, I could show you that the sponge is filled to the top, but not beyond the point where the serpentine vent air vent begins to get ink in it and notice that the level is about oh a little over say 3 16 of an inch from the top that means i loaded about 13 and a half ml of ink on my syringe we're starting with a flushed and properly dried cartridge all of these cartridges weighed 13.5 grams before I began to refill them. I had to do that on a small oven that I have. I put them on a tray, of course, laying on top of paper toweling, and I put the temperature about 110 degrees. And I checked that to make sure that it was accurate. And I, I just allowed them to sit there for several hours and they began to drop in weight. And when I reached 13.5, that was the perfect dry weight. That will allow ink to flow freely into the sponge. And you'll see the process as I begin to do this one. So what we want is a cartridge that is nice and pristine white. As you can see, I got the good clips on. Some of my cartridges have the regular original. And in that case, you need a rubber band to keep it in place. But you must have this on. Do not attempt to refill this with the clip removed or you'll have ink all over the place. Now, what will happen, and I want to show you, is that at the joint between the wall that separates the sponge side and the liquid reservoir, there is a small hole at the very base. That's where the ink enters. It will first saturate the bottom portion of the sponge. And as the ink levels drop on the liquid side, the saturation will continue to rise until it reaches the top. Now, here you can see the prism. That's what triggers the low ink warning. If you have any kind of moisture in the cartridge, it will block the ink from coming in. And besides, even if it could come in, it would just dilute the ink and it would not be at the proper concentration. So what we're gonna do is just gonna put this aside for a minute. We're gonna open up the ink bottle. I'm gonna put this aside here, out of our way. So we have our ink bottle here and this yellow looks a little bit different. I think it's much stronger. And again, that's the whole key with prolonging or increasing longevity with this new ink set. The black is tenacious. I got some on my hands today and believe me, it seems like all of the colors just have a higher level of tenacity, let's just say. And that is good. I mean, that will ensure that the claims about increased longevity may be true after all. So what we do, notice this has been aluminum foil sealed. Basically it is a aluminum foil that is has two layers. One of the plastic and then the foil itself and it's heat sealed at PC with a machine that does that. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and puncture that. And I'm using a four inch needle here because what I'm gonna do is just simply hold it there like that and just go like that okay it's a little bit tough if you do it carefully i don't want to make a big hole i just want to create a hole large enough for just my syringe needle so now i'm going to load around 14 milliliters of ink so we'll go ahead and suck up and right about that point right there is where we want to be and i'm going to leave this sitting here for a minute hopefully it won't tip over prepare my cartridge, remove the plug, put the plug 
I'm going to move this out, out of the way because this is one needle that you can use. Of course, it's shorter, but it may not reach the ink. You may have to tilt the bottle then. Remove the needle carefully. We're just going to go ahead and wipe it. Again, we are, you know, you want to keep the whole process as clean as possible. We're going to go ahead and in, hold, in, hold the syringe in this orientation horizontally. Tilt the cartridge. Insert the needle. Don't do it this way because if you have a syringe that is brand spanking new, it's very likely that the plunger will go down a little bit on its own. You'll have ink all over yourself. Hold it horizontally, tilt the cart vertically, insert it, and once we are in, we can now proceed to inject some ink. And you should be able to see at the very bottom corner right here, the ink begins to migrate. Now I'm looking at it backlit, so you're looking at it front lit, and you should be able to get a really good idea of what's happening. We want that exit sponge to become fully saturated as well. Just keep on adding ink very carefully. You can tilt it this way to aid the flow. As you know, the ink levels are dropping as the sponge is being saturated. Continue adding ink. We want to maintain the level of ink. That, that forces it down. The weight of the ink alone will force it into the sponge. The reason this is flowing so well is because I processed this cartridge correctly and I let it dry to the proper dry weight of 13.5. You can get away with 13.6, but that still has a little bit of moisture left in it. Now, it's going to reach the top and then I'm going to have enough ink left to top off the chamber. So we'll wait until that happens. Some people say, hold your finger over the vent. I don't do that. It's not really necessary. So I'm going to tilt the cart back a little bit, make sure that I do not overflow. Okay, so I loaded a little bit too much ink in my syringe. I'm going to draw back. We want to keep a gap about 3 sixteenths of an inch. I used to do it at 1 eighth of an inch, but 3 sixteenths is fine. Remember, the low warning is going to be triggered at the correct time anyway, simply because of the prism being exposed to air. At that point, you're just going to wait. Just let the cart sit with the plug removed for a while. If you want to test ink flow, to make sure that this is a perfectly filled cart anyway. You can see that straight away. Remove the clip. You will get a couple of drops of ink and then it will just sort of stop dripping when you have the plug inserted. And you can see the plug just coming through the bottom of that seat and sealing itself. If I remove the clip and remove the plug at the same time, you'll get a drip every half second. Drip, drip, drip drip, drip, like that. That's what you want to achieve. If you want to test your ink flow, that's what you need to do. I'm not going to do it here because it'll just waste my new ink. These inks are only available at this point for the next few days when you buy the limited edition refill kit. That includes a set of pre-flushed, pre-modified, I should have said that first, cartridges, CLI 42s, originals, all you got to do is fill them. They come with these clips already attached. Refill those cartridges. Reset them before you refill them, of course. You cannot really reset these without making a mess after you refill them. So you do the resetting prior to refilling all of the cartridges. Reset them all at once and then proceed with the refilling process. Of course, I did that the other day. So while they were still drying, that is it. Wait a few minutes. Just just take your time. Give it a few minutes. If this drops, that means that the sponge had not reached the proper saturation level yet. Notice there are no white spots anywhere on that sponge. Okay. Properly saturated. You can clearly see. I hope you can see that. The lower and upper half of the sponge. There are two different densities. This is a highly engineered sponge. It produces the perfect inflow for the finicky and rather delicate thermal printheads that the Canon printers use. 
So that is it. This is done. This is ready to be used. What about my testing? Let's talk about that a second. What I'm going to be doing back here, I have a set of OEM cartridges. Okay. I bought them one at a time back when they had those incredible, incredible, yes, incredible paper sales. You would buy two cartridges so that your bill would be more than $30, including shipping. And you would get this ridiculous deal on paper. You would buy one pack. And in some cases, you would get nine free packs of the same paper, or mostly it was four. They don't have those any longer. They stopped doing that. I think they were getting rid of stock that they had accumulated. Maybe. That is my, my theory behind that. Because otherwise, it just made zero sense for you to get $350 worth of paper for only $49 plus the price of the inks that you bought. And you would only get those deals unless you bought like two cartridges so you would go over the $30 limit. It was amazing. Sometimes you could just give you the paper free regardless whether you bought paper along with that ink. It was crazy. But that's how I was able to accumulate quite a bit of paper. And so now I'm ready to test. So what we're going to do, we're going to print some standard images on Canon papers. I'm just going to use ProLuster. Standard images, letting the driver only control color. So I will do a gamut type image. I will do my regular favorite standard image. And then I will proceed to do some of my own images, maybe something like a picture of Nathan in some of my Gettysburg scenes and, and landscapes. And then I will switch over to these inks and we'll do a cleaning cycle. That's enough to flush all of the OEM ink away. And then I will do the same exact procedure. Print standard images using the driver, okay? And then I will print the rest of the duplicate images again. And we will do a side-by-side -side comparison. We'll try to find out how close visually these two inks can print, okay? The goal, of course, not only increase longevity, this yellow and the black are the key components in this scheme. And of course, they claim increased color accuracy and reproduction. We'll have to see. All right, so that is it. I hope you enjoyed this quick video. You saw how easy that was. The reason that was easy is because the cartridge was properly flushed and properly dried. If I had even the least bit, maybe one gram of moisture, the ink would not flow as well. So you have to make sure that you dry them. Do whatever you have to do. Use a hair dryer. I don't care what you do. Just apply some heat and then constantly weigh the cartridges. When they reach 13.5, they are ready to be reset and refilled. And they will accept the ink properly like these over here did. All right. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. And until the next time, happy printing, everybody, and happy refilling. Bye-bye, everyone.